Hello, you are listening to Just Films and That. This is the podcast where we talk about those films we think deserve a little bit more love. Whether they're underrated or underseen, we're going to talk about them. So, let's see what it'll be this week. How you doing, Jamie? You all right? Yeah, not bad. How are you, buddy? I'm all right. It's warm, isn't it? Oh, it's hot. It's, it's well hot when we're recording and we're, this. Like, you're a bit of a larger lad. I'm a very larger lad, so yeah. it's not, it's not yeah. fair for people In like personality, us. I think, both of us. More than <laughs> yeah. Than size. It's not the size, anyway. That um, might be the first time I've called you fat. <laughs> <laughs> you're not fat, Josh. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to cut down, but you know, I just can't. Uh, but yes, it is. It is very warm. However, we're very excited because we're joined uh, by another brilliant guest, um, Alex Haddo. How are you doing? Thanks for coming on the pod. Hello. I'm yeah. I'm also sweltering. It is so unbelievably hot. Aside from that, I am very good. Yes. So, um, as you may or may not know, we always start every guest episode with a random question. So I'll put it out to the list to see if they can come up with something. I've got one here from Damien, uh, Damien Passmore on Twitter. Um, I hope, I hope Damien's okay. Um, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll start with that. Um, he says, jelly babies, bite the heads off first or just eat them whole. Jamie, come to you first. It's a deep one. A deep <laughs> one. Uh, right. So I know he's asked an A or B question there, but I'd go with, you bite the head, your head off, the body off the first one. And then you put the head on a toothpick and you put it out for the rest of the jelly babies to see what is to come. Yeah. Nice. I think. What yeah. colour? What colour is the first one? I don't see colour, Josh. I see you trying to trap me. Okay, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. It's picked indiscriminately, like the way the, the, the Greeks or the Romans would pick to uh, obliterate some of their army. Yeah, you just sort of throw them up in the air and whatever colour lands. Yeah. 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 So you're, you're a head, a head off first guy. Yeah, head off first, but it's because the head stays out for all to see. <laughs> like a warning. Do you think, how many seconds do you think a jelly baby's head uh, still carries on to move once the body's been removed? Oh, how long is it conscious to me? Like chickens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know. 10 minutes. I'm, I'm guessing you guys, yeah. like when you eat a jelly baby, can you hear the screams in your mouth like I do? I like to muffle the screams with my tongue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you go with them face down on your tongue, that that, that, that suffocates them before. It's actually kinder. Yeah, and that's that's what we're all about. It's, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what about you, Alex? Or are you not bothered on jelly babies at all? I would say I eat them whole, but I actually mm. when I was picturing how I eat a jelly baby, I think I actually like suck off all the the talc. <laughs> oh, like the icing sugar. Like, yeah, before I before I crunch it. <laughs> the talc. It's like talc. Put some talc powder on those jelly babies so people yeah. don't get a rash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So maybe I'll start to uh, just suck that off. Oh God, this is this. Don't clip this up. <laughs> That's uh, it. There we go. And then uh, and then put them back, sort of naked, if you mm. will, mm. untalked, Talk- talkless. Let them dry and be all scaly, and then eat them. Right. So yours is more like a drawn out torture, like a hung, drawn, yeah. and quartered, whereas James yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is quick. So it goes yeah, back into the bag. Yeah, you, you put it back into the bag, so it thinks that it's going to live. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the equivalent of like go to the next village and tell them that we're coming. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've both gone for quite sinister. I mean, I think we've, I think we're probably more disturbed than Damien in the end. Mm, yeah. Well, I hope all three of you are okay. <laughs> I'm not particularly bothered on jelly babies. They wouldn't be my go to. No, but I do enjoy them. Mm, yeah. Very retro. It's a retro sweet. I mean, yeah. As, as a type two pastels. diabetic, it's very naughty when I have them. Mm. Yeah. Very, very naughty. I'm a bit of a bad boy because I don't care about my sugar levels. <laughs> that's what that's what draw me to you, mate. Yeah, yeah, that's what the doctors say, isn't it? Oh, he is a bit of a bad boy. <laughs> oh, he's fainting. Oh, look at that. He's passed out in the waiting room. Oh, hey, like? The rebel. Uh, has he got a bag of jelly babies there with no heads? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dressed in war paint. From <laughs> from <laughs> nothing, else, yeah. no, nothing else. <laughs> Alex dropped you off. She's gone back to suck off all the talcum powder off some of the yeah, jelly babies. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think I'd eat mine whole. But anyway, we will move on to talk about this week's film then, which is The Ides of March from 2011. So spoiler warnings if you've not seen it. Alex, you picked this one. So tell the guys at home a little bit about what it's about. But more importantly, why did you pick it? Is it underrated? Is it underseen? Okay, I'll tell you what it's about first. It's about a democratic politician running to be... I, I, I mean, I, I I sort of know about American politics, but I think he's running to be the Democratic nominee, essentially. Mm. It's when they have to kind of go and get the, you know, they're doing the primaries. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but essentially the intonation is that this guy, if he gets 
if he gets it, he's going to win the, the whole thing. Like, um, and he's a good guy. He's a, you know, he's saying things where I like to, I think part of the reason why I like this film is because um, it sort of gives you a glimpse into, oh, what things could be. Mm. Um, you know, like the scene in Love Actually where Hugh Grant stands up to the American politician, Billy Bob Thornton, <laughs> and you're like, God, imagine if that happened in real life. Um, so you you get the sense even off camera, there's, you know, there's private scenes between him and Ryan Gosling, who is playing the assistant advisor to his campaign. Philip Seymour Hoffman is the the kind of the main advisor. And uh, yeah, even in the private sort of scenes, you see that George Clooney is a, is a good guy um, and, and he wants to do right by the country, he wants to sort of not be corrupt and all this sort of stuff. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of, Ryan Gosling is actually the, the central character. Um, and I mean, I don't know how, do I go into spoilers or do I just? Yeah, yeah, of... absolutely. Yeah, oh, spoiler, okay, okay. spoiler the way. So, uh, yeah, so Ryan Gosling, uh, is also, is, is a really good guy and he really believes in George Clooney's character. George Clooney is the politician and, uh, um, Ryan Gosling kind of hooks up with an intern that's on the pot, that's on the campaign, Kel Surprise. But he's 30, she's 20, you know, it's not it's not too insane. And uh, he's hooked up with her a couple of times and then she, they all get given the same phone in the kind of campaign office. And uh, in the middle of the night, he picks up her phone because it's ringing, thinking it's his phone. And it's the governor, it's George mm. Clooney. And he realises that this guy isn't the good guy we all think he is. Um, he's not squeaky clean. And then the whole film is essentially about can you get to the place you want to be to do the good things without becoming a shit mm. um, and that's to do and that's George Clooney and Ryan Gosling as well and it's kind of it's yeah it's just sort of like a, an entire tale about morality and and mm. versus reality I think um, yeah absolutely and it's it, I think I just think it's I've got a, I've got a couple of things when I when I rewatched it that I thought about, but in general I just think it's a brilliant <laughs> film, and it's kind of it's it's amazing as much as it is sort of depressing. Um, but you wouldn't class it as a depressing film, I don't think. But I just think it's brilliantly done. Mm. Uh, it's kind of like the duality in a lot of the characters, uh, mm. apart from the female one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so is it is it is it underrated then? Is it underseen? I think it's. So I, in my head, I think it was underrated at the time. Um, and I looked up a little bit of, um, not criticism, just like general reaction. And actually, I think it was received quite well. But I feel like whenever I talk to people about it, they they don't know what I'm on about. So I think mm. it's more slightly underseen than it is underrated. But I, I just remember seeing it. I, went, I think I went to the cinema on my own, went to see it and just was like, oh, my God, this was brilliant. Like even the final scene where... And again, this is a spoiler where I think the intonation is that you don't know if Ryan Gosling is going to spill everything or if he's going to just tow the party line and become one of them um, because that's what it leaves you hanging on. Um, yeah, I guess the question know. that he asks himself is more important than the outcome, isn't it? It's it, they, they put quite a few kind of moral quandaries to the audience and it's a bit of a what would you do? You know, yeah. would you blackmail George Clooney? Would you go for, for the meeting with Paul Giamatti? Yeah. The whole time it asks you, like, what would you do? Would you hide evidence of when someone's committed to suicide? <laughs> you know. It's, yeah. Uh... And the, one of the things that I didn't hugely um, understand was why it would be such a huge story that Ryan Gosling, who is the Democratic campaign assistant, uh, meeting up with for, for a beer, in which he turns down the job offer. Um, he meets up with Paul Giamatti, who is this, the Republican like campaign assistant what the, i understand that it wouldn't look good but i was thinking would this be like the worst thing ever because ryan Gosling could surely say yeah i met up with him because he said he had something for me and when he offered me a job i said no he said well, just they, says it's important doesn't it? I, th I think it that bit i think comes back to the, the little speech philip seymour hoffman gives which is it's all about loyalty so he really values loyalty and he tells that story about i did my first campaign and it was this nothing guy and it, it went nowhere, but I was loyal to him and other people offered me jobs and I turned them down and then he came back and he remembered me. So I think it's just meant to be, it's more that it's a big deal for Philip Seymour Hoffman as his boss oh, than yeah. anything else, I think. Hugely, but I think, I mean, this is why I think the film's good. You're constantly thinking, is that character a good person that just did a bad thing or are they actually a bad person mm. just trying to stay on the right side? Mm. But I think he didn't, 
he thought that maybe Paul Giamatti had, you know, had maybe, you know, secretly got something on his own candidate or like he didn't know he was going to offer him a job. But the intonation is that he did know that and he was going for his own ego. But I think, yeah, you just see Ryan Gosling's character become completely angry because he is a good guy and he wants to do the right thing and he believes in it. And and the kind of um, the journalist who's played by, uh, she's a brilliant actress. Oh, Marissa, Marissa, Marissa Tomei. Tomei. Yeah, 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 Marissa Tomei. It's kind of the whole, the, you know, the, the first hour of the film is kind of various people telling Ryan Gosling that he's too idealistic, that he's, you know, that he... he Sorry, I keep saying Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling's character that he's um, that he's too idealistic. You know that he believes in in this, in the governor too much, and actually, you know, it's all a game, and that's all it is, and blah blah blah. And it's so depressing to to him, a thirty year old guy who's got a brilliant mind and who's probably going to go on to do great things. Um, and then you see him beco- like become corrupted by that system because you know he thinks he he's in, unjustly fired, and then he does a series of really bad things, and you're still left wondering like. Has he gone to the dark side now or actually is he going to expose him? Yeah, I thought it was a really interesting like exploration of that idea of um, the ability of ambition and power to corrupt a person. You know, that idea of he he holds George Clooney's character up as this shining beacon of, like you say, like morality and perfection and all this. And then he turns yeah. out he's not, but he still yeah. is going to be president. So it's like, but I yeah. still want to be the president's, you know, advisor or whatever. So exactly, yeah. there's something in it for him. And, and is that the right thing to do when he's essentially his actions have, have sort of led to, to Evan Rachel Wood's character, um, you know, uh, uh, taking her own life and stuff like that. Jamie, had you seen this one before? Because I hadn't seen it before. I watched this years ago. Um, and it kind of, yeah, when it came out and it was one of them where I kind of, I watched it and went, oh, okay, that was, that was quite good. I don't think I was in love, as in love with Ryan Gosling as I am now. Mm. And he, to me, he was the notebook guy. So I was like, oh, okay, look at him trying. Um, <laughs> yeah. But when you look, when you watch it now, did you not, like, I thought he was great. Oh yeah, no, I love I love Ryan God. I love that he doesn't overreact. And yeah. he he's he's really good at just, you know, a very still face where you can tell what he's thinking. You know, some yeah. actors will do like shocked face. He he would have run into the, the hotel bedroom and hand over the mouth. Oh no, you know, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very good at just showing you I'm calculating something, but I'm gonna keep a little bit back for myself. Yeah. Um and it I think it's really well directed by Clooney. This one that he he doesn't. It's weird because on the one hand you want those like Oscar clips of actors you know ranting and raving, but actually this is it's a whole film just about conversations in back rooms. That's it. Mm. Yeah, that's why I think it's struggled because there's no melodrama. You know, there's a little bit of drama, but it's 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 not a political thriller. It's not a a, a political comedy. It's it's just kind of a this is what happens. You know. Yeah. And that's the thing, and it's quite, you know, prescient at the moment with our election just happening and the states and everything. And it is like the and there's a there's a kind of senator, I think it is, or another governor that they need the endorsement for because they need his delegates or something, you know, to get enough for elect- electoral college votes and something like that. And and you know, they're they're saying, you know, we we so and so's offered him secretary of state if you know if he endorses them. And that's when you realise like, oh, this is all just such bullshit. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like just get, it's just game playing, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like it's George Clooney's character is politically still a, an uncorrupt guy. Is what they're trying to say at the start, and what you realise is he is fallible. He, you know, he slept with an intern um, despite being married. He's, you know, and you're like, oh, for God's sake, he's a shit like everybody else. But actually, when they have the, the chat with him, and they're like, you're going to have to do something for him, blah blah blah. He's like, no, that guy wants to take the top ten floors off the UN. He's a bad guy. I'm not going to. I'm not going to bow to it. And you know, you're kind of really rooting for him there. And then he does bow. You kind of see the second half, you you see that you've been built up to like George Clooney as much as Ryan yeah. Gosling. So that, yeah. there's no hint of him, you know, being a cheat or like throwing away his, his morals. So yeah. when that phone call comes and when he, he does decide to take Thompson on, it's you're just as heartbroken as uh, yeah. Gosling, I think, which they do quite well. Yeah, because it really, do, it really does like sort of come out of nowhere. And I think even I was trying to think about um, things that you say, Jamie, because me and Jamie watch a lot of films that I'll just <laughs> like with a lot of things. I think like I've got quite a critical mind, but with films, I'll just go, oh, that was good. And Jamie will say, well, obviously they were doing that to to show that. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, um, well, I don't think about anything. But just I was to thinking, say, I've, I've never met this person in my life. <laughs> <laughs> 
But Jamie, I was trying to think like you, like a critical mind, even the scene when they're on the private plane flying somewhere, Ryan Gosling is nervous, like when there's turbulence. Mm. So they're trying to say that like he's he's soluble and George Clooney like could not be less flappable. George Clooney's like the safe pair of hands that's gonna that's gonna, you know, guide everybody home and he's he's absolutely he, he can't be beaten and he's he can't be fooled. And even in the debates, do you know what I mean? Like the way he talks is incredible, like his character. And then mm. Brian Gosling's kind of nervous because he's more he's he's in it because he believes in it. He's not in it because he wants power and blah 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 mm. blah. But then by the end you're like, oh God, is he? Mm. It's like it's like everyone's being everyone's being shown where well, you could have this though. Like if you just yeah. bent the rules or you just stab this person. Obviously because the, the, the title is a is a Shakespeare quote, isn't it? It's from yeah. Ju- it's from Julius Caesar. And yeah. that's all about how everyone will just stab each other in the back to do whatever yeah. they want. And what if we all yeah, take yeah. this guy down? And almost it's funny because it's not it's not that. It's not all these people trying to take one guy down. If anything, it's one guy railing against loads of other people. So it's almost like Gosling is the Julius Caesar character in this, yeah. in this sort of thing. Mm. I thought that was quite interesting but like i do love that idea of the imperfect hero you know of, yeah. of like, like and of the, the 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 you know the fallen idol type thing sorry jamie what are we gonna say yeah. Gos- gosling is being set up earlier than you think when you realize that uh, philip seymour hoffman is the one that released the information and actually mm. and also yeah. uh that um what's the other fella's name paul giamatti well paul giamatti uh had no intention of hiring like he would have hired him but yeah. he actually the whole point was that he was going to screw him over mm. um which like that they're the bits that I like when the blocks start to fall and you kind of see it all like, oh, this has been going on the whole time. This isn't yeah. people and reacting to stuff. It's like Ryan Gosling being shown as the youngster, actually you're not the hot shit. Like mm. we can still get one over on you. And yeah. it's and it's and it is that constant question, I think, with people on the left. And I mean, I know the Democrats in America are like that you wouldn't call them left, but they're just not fascists. Um but like <laughs> It's, I think there's that constant thing on the left of always trying to be the good guys. And sometimes people think if you were just bad a couple of times, you'd actually get in power to do the things that you know are good. And it's that constant flip up because when they go for that meeting, Paul Giamatti and Ryan Gosling, Paul Giamatti is like, I've seen a hundred great Democrats fall mm. at because they won't do the, you know, because they, they won't, won't get their hands dirty. dirty. They won't, yeah, yeah it's, it's, they, they won't, dirty. they won't, they won't drop to a level that they think is inappropriate. Exactly. Yeah. They won't check their interns. Got, yeah, they won't bang interns yeah. in that, you yeah. know. <laughs> and, and then that's what, why, why even bother then, you know? But yeah. no, um, I think it's one of those. It's like, like you say, you've got a, you've got a compromise to a, to a certain extent, and that, that's yeah. sort of what he's saying, isn't it? I thought yeah, that was. Really, yeah. I mean, I, I thought that the script. I'm always in awe of anyone who can write this sort of stuff because it's so naturalistic. Mm. Yeah, in the way, it, it in the really way it's feels written. like you're almost watching like a a document, like a, a mockumentary. <laughs> yeah. and it's, I mean, obviously, it, it, the, I'm a massive. I don't know if either of you guys have watched. It, I'm a massive fan of the thick of it. Yeah, yeah, and it's a little bit like that, but it's not funny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You're it's just not like, as, oh, it's not no. as farcical based. Yeah. yeah, it's it's more like oh, these are actual. This is just what it's like. Yeah, just. Hard. Um, horrible the only thing i would say re-watching it i thought evan rachel wood's character was a little 2d and a little kind mm. of it was a little bit high school when it was like oh abortion you know killed herself you know that's you know that's good she's the you know the head of the dnc's daughter that kind of thing i mean mm. i think she was great in it but she just the character I mean, I, didn't I, have much. I personally wouldn't make light of mental health issues i'll tell you but <laughs> that's the way you want to go um, no, right. she, she. I think she needed a couple more scenes. Yeah, for for us to see the kind of stakes and also to see it, she was crumbling mentally. Yeah, this is a it's a lads movie. It let's let's see how mm. let's check in on how the lads are doing. And even that like that last intern who they they show like oh Clooney's going to do this again is pretty yeah. much just like you know oh look at this attractive female mm. we'll watch her she won't say anything. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Clooney's wife, I can't really remember her saying that much apart from, isn't my husband amazing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fine. Not every, not, you know, not every film has to have, uh, you know, complex female characters if the story doesn't warrant it. But it was just a bit like if there was one scene of her kind of talking to her dad and showing the dynamic of how kind of Christian he was or one scene of her like showing that she was actually 
great at her job or you know like something like mm, that just mm. kind of I, I think it needs to be clearer that a dad's a big deal yeah yeah I yeah, think the, yeah. I think that the, the the power he is supposed to have because obviously like you say he's the the party lead or whatever he is I'm not yeah. entirely sure what his job is but he's you know he's a he's a big deal in that world and yeah. you, you get one scene where he's obviously obviously at the funeral and stuff but you it's not clear that it's like well, if you upset this guy like you ruin your life yeah 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 um and stuff like that so i do think i think she's great in what in the bits that she has i think she's good you know she's 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 oh, very very good, actor. good yeah. and and like you say no not everything has to have a strong male presence or a strong female presence or anything but i do think there's definitely a lack of a, a stronger female presence because there are characters in this it doesn't it's not important that they're male do you know what i mean either paul jim yeah, yeah. or, or or philip seymour hoffman could have been a could, could have been a woman Oh yeah, and, there's and just no reason it, for it. I think it, it. I think it's still a brilliant film. I just think mm. her as a character could have been, like you say, fleshed out a bit more. Just so, like Jamie was saying, so you sort of care about her more as well, you know. So you're a bit like, oh god, this this girl's kind of being chewed up and spat out by the system, and mm. it's you know, it's horrible, and it's um, and yeah, it gets it gets really dark, doesn't it? It's um, there's a. I thought the brilliant scene though was like really chilling, and I remember watching it. Before um, was when um, Ryan Gosling, you know, he, he's basically first on the scene uh, when uh, Evan Rachel Wood's character has taken her own life and he takes her phone. And when George Clooney, as the governor, is doing a public speech kind of to the, to the media, sort of saying we're so sad about her death and all that sort of stuff. And then his phone is, he picks up his phone kind of when he's stopped talking and his phone is ringing and it's coming up as her and he's scanning the crowd until he sees Ryan Gosling. Mm. And then he knows that like oh that I thought that was really that was really good it's, yeah it's very like, impactful that bit and that's like yeah. and that that's the proper that's the toppling of the fallen idol so like that's yeah. very much like yeah. I've got your fucking number pal yeah like and at that point you're like cheering for Gosling because you think mm. he's gonna do the right thing you know you're thinking mm. you're thinking he's gonna stitch him up and this mm. is it this is Clooney's <laughs> character coming down and but also oh, like yeah. if yeah. Other filmmakers would have had like Gosling, you know, say over the phone something, or even interrupt the the yeah. uh, the press conference. <laughs> you know, Harrison Ford style in the the Fugitive, you know, just <laughs> screaming at everyone. Whereas this, it, it's the imagery of just him on the phone. Mm. And I noted in that right, this is the proper film dork in me. Everybody <laughs> yeah. next, everybody next to Gosling is wearing like uh, a, a dark uh, shirt or a dark suit. And Gosling's wearing a light colour just so that your eye is drawn to him even mm. stronger. Uh, nice. you know, I, I, I studied film in Northampton, so I've, mm. I've learned how to pick these things <laughs> up. <Yeah. laughs> well, anyway, I, I'd be interested. So what did you think watching it again, Jamie? Like, what did you think um, having watched it again? Apart from about Ryan Gosling's shirt, <laughs> drawing, attention to, drawing more attention to a man who already draws plenty of attention. Yeah. So <laughs> I've actually talked myself around just because originally I was going to say that I think the... I think primary colours kind of does it in a, does this in a bit more of an mm. interesting way, um, and you've even got Wag the Dog, which is like a political comedy. And I think the the main criticism of this is that it kind of it doesn't really push what it's saying that much. It just kind of goes, "Here you go, here's the thing." All right, bye bye. You know, you don't get to see the fallout of it. You don't you don't get to and because like Gosling plays it so stoic, you don't really get to see like a man broken. It's about it's about a man's ideals broken down. But he just kind of goes from scene to scene. Not re- you don't really get to see that change in his character that much. To the point that we don't know what he's going to do at the end. Um, so I've I've got those issues there. But I do I think he's he's smart enough to do to if he's going to have a kind of very low key script where there isn't those big shout moments. We best get the best actors in the world. So mm. yeah, yeah. And Philip Seymour Hoffman can do this in his sleep. He pretty much plays the same character in Charlie Wilson's War. I think he's played him about 20 times. Um to the point that you like he could be reading off a menu and you'd be like, God, I, I love just watching Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> Is he gonna have uh, a starter? I wanna know. Screaming out away just like in Mission Impossible 3. Seven! <laughs> <laughs> but no, he is him and Giamatti as well. You know, it's such a good cut. I think what I quite respect about this is that Clooney, I've always been hit and miss with Clooney as a director. I think he's a great actor, but I think as a director, you know, I think um, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind is great. Mm. But I remember thinking Monuments Men was like really dull. I've not seen loads of them. I've obviously seen this now and stuff like that. But I have a lot of respect for as a director casting yourself in a role like that. And he is in it and he's definitely, his presence is felt. But he is not the main character. 
but you feel oh, his yeah. presence all yeah, the yeah, way, no, all the no. way through it. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that's really, really good. Because the, the one thing I knew about this film before going in, apart from generally what it was about, was the, the famous poster, right? It's got quite a famous poster, hasn't it? Which is, yeah. it's Ryan Gosling, and then the other half of his face is George Clooney, but it's a magazine, right? So uh, George Clooney on Time magazine, yeah. That's it, yeah. So it's like, it's very, very heavy on the Clooney and the marketing, and, 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 and I reckon if you watch the trailer and everything, it'd be all Clooney, Clooney, Clooney. But when you actually go into it, he is very much there and you know he's there and you know he's a big deal in it, yeah. but it's not about him. Yeah, massively. And and Gosling was 30 at the time. Mm. I looked mm. it up, but it's like he's actually given him a huge platform in this film, you know, to kind of, as a as a pretty young actor. I mean, I don't know how, I think, I mean, obviously he'd done The Notebook. He hadn't done Drive yet, I don't think. Same year, but I don't know if it would have come out. I think, oh, I, I think right. it is the same year, 2000. It was around the same time. It's not that right. far off. This is the start of him saying, look, I, I'm not the rom-com guy. I was in Notebook. Yeah. Mm. I'm not that guy. So he this starts is, to do more interesting projects. This is yeah. his Catch Me If You Can or Gangs of New yeah. York, like DiCaprio yeah. did them and went, I'm proper act, you know me. I'm not just like handsome and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then and now he's been, like you say, he's steadily just improved and improved. I mean, I thought I thought the cast were great and every, and everyone as well gets a chance to shine, I think, and even if it's just yeah. a little bit. Because I think Gosling is, is a good actor and he can do it all as well. You know, I think he can do comedy. He can do pathos like he does in this. I mean, the moment when he's in the car and he has that little bit where he's upset, I thought that's really good because he is very good at being... He's, in the same way, actually, that Clooney is, he's really, really good at doing understated. Mm. Yeah. And I uh, hate when people over at. Yeah. So do yeah. I. I think it is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anything then, Alex, is there anything you didn't like or have you already sort of mentioned that? Yeah, I sort of, di- I sort of didn't like the sort of, if you were writing a play in high school, it would be like, abortion and od on the same day mm. you know that that kind of slight um extremism mm. Mm. of her character the fact um, that she says we're catholic it's like that was like that's proper a level stuff that yeah that mm. yeah that was a bit sort of like and the yeah the plot hole with the kind of there would be no dna like that's what gosling could have had him on mm. he would have been like well when they do the autopsy you know it's gonna say she was pregnant blah 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 blah, blah. Mm. um if this had a bit more melodrama, the, I mean, there's room for a bit of a conspiracy there, given, you know, the theories around Marilyn Monroe and how possibly the CIA offed her or Secret yeah, Service yeah. offed her because of her affair with JFK. You know, the, there's room for kind of a little hint of that maybe in this, is did did she do it all? Do, yeah, that, yeah, that would have been bad? like a, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, like, it, yeah, the, that that's the sort of, the only two little sort of plot holes slash could have been a little bit better i think mm, mm. Um, what, about, what about you jamie is there anything you particularly didn't like or so i, I really like all the backstabbing in it but i felt like if we're gonna have gosling win which he, he kind of wins at the end even though it shows you that maybe he sold the soul at the risk of it give us like a more dominoes fall and like he he kind of just he, he leaves Marissa Tome at security and says reporters aren't here. Let's have some stuff that he's actually put in place to get revenge on everyone. And, you know, he's, mm. yeah, yeah. I, I would have liked to, I don't know. It's weird. If you see, if you see draft day with Kevin Cosner, draft day is all about the NFL draft day. And the very end scene is great because it's him. He, he's been learning about everyone throughout the day. And then when it comes to doing his drafts and everyone's like, you're so stupid for having made these mistakes. He gets everyone. And it's a real like punch the air moment where he's like, I, you know, he says words back to people and he's he's getting this player that he never thought he'd get because everything he's put in place is just falls in and it just makes you feel good. And it, not to that extent, but I, I would have liked to have seen a few more of like what Gosling does just fall in place. Like maybe Clooney says, well, I'm still going to sack you at the end of this. And he's like, well, I've got this, this and this. So, mm. you know. Yeah, a, yeah. A, a bit more of a yeah, you go guy, and then we were like, oh no, actually, it is quite sad because he still sold the soul to do it. I know what you mean, like almost like more stakes. Yeah, yeah, and more and more almost like if, like you say, if he fucked over Marissa Tomei or whatever, at the end you'd almost be cheering a bit more because he's sort of taking down the system that took him down. Even yeah. though he's, even though he's probably become one of them now, it's like, oh yeah, she turned on him the second she could and. You know, Philip Seymour Hoffman did, and George Clooney let him down. And actually, if, if he could have, I mean, he did, he did kind of win, like you say. But if it was a, it was, if it was a bit more like everybody got their comeuppance, 
except Ryan there, Gosling sort of thing. He walks away from the burning yeah. wreckage of, of all yeah. that sort of he's thing. He's baddie, but he's like, kind of Lighting a yeah. cigarette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do think a really, doing his tie. Just, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's, there's a really important scene that shows Philip Seymour Hoffman after he's been fired on a press uh, thing saying like how much he supports Ryan Gosling and it's how he just takes it's just a job to him like how, uh, yeah. how he, he doesn't take it personally you know he doesn't go after Gosling and he's fine with it yeah and when he says um, when you there's like a there's that kick isn't there when he says why are you at the funeral of her her funeral and he's like. I've noticed since she was a kid, I was the one that got her the internship. Yeah, friends and of family. Like, oh yeah. god, friends like friends of the family or whatever. And then uh also he says, like, what maybe one day in the future, you know, we can go for a beer and you can tell me what you had on Morris, you know, George Clooney's character. And you and you know Ryan Gosling's gone fully evil because he just says, How do you know I didn't have anything on you? Mm. Mm. Like, and you're just like, Oh, you could have just said, Yeah, cool. Like, you know. Yeah, proper drank the cool lady moment, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. But then is he doing him a favour there by not shooting down his ideals of Clooney? He's he's saving what uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman sees of Clooney. Or do you think yeah. Hoffman would have known anyway? Yeah. I think he kind of I think he kind of knew anyway. I don't think he thought he he did what he did. But you know, but I think he's he's just like, oh, at some point they're all gonna become evil. Because he was saying take Thompson, wasn't he? He was kind yeah. of advising him. I guess if you're that close to Clooney, you know he's a shagger. Yeah. <laughs> I love it if you just turn <laughs> top shagger or anything. Yeah. If, you work, <laughs> if you've worked with enough of them, you, I guess you're like, at some point, you're going to find yeah. out that they've done something bad. Yeah. I, I walked in the office, he was dressed as Batman, things were going down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> for, and, from, sorry, Alex, after you. I know, I was going to say, last thing, Leonardo DiCaprio was a producer on this as well. So I saw that. political it, drama, though, doesn't he, Leo? DiCaprio was supposed to play Stephen, and then he had to drop out. But too on too realistic producer. about the age of the girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to buy it, Leo. No one's going <laughs> to. The original script said she's 22, and he was like, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> was DiCaprio Gosling or Clooney? I suppose at that point it would have been Gosling, wouldn't yeah, he? He's way Gosling. too young to be. To yeah, be there's Clooney. some interesting casting choices on this one. I, I can't remember them, but it's worth checking out IMDb. Because, mm. uh, like, I think Brad, at one point Brad Pitt was supposed to be the Giamatti character, but he's too fit to be. He's too sexy for that. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, I like that Giamatti and uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman are both schlubby. Like, the yeah. Like, yeah. like, Philip Seymour Hoffman goes for a haircut, and when he comes out, he still looks like shit. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. His shirt is like constantly untucked throughout the whole yeah. thing, and it looks a bit off white. And like, Gosling obviously looks, you know, amazing. Yeah. Like, his suit's incredible all the way through. He's really, you know, he's in shape and everything. And it's, it is that kind of like, they've both been beaten down by the system and Gosling's mm. still ironing his shirt kind of thing. I think the, the least believable bit is when Paul Giamatti said he didn't have chicken wings at the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did. Oh, we all know you had the chicken wings, You got Paul. there half an hour like, early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Paul. I think for me... So there, there isn't. I we, we always try and be balanced and, and say things like that we that we didn't that we didn't like. I, there really wasn't anything for me in this. I thought it was really tight. I think the the problem is is it, it is what it is, which is that because it's a political drama, I think it's the sort of thing that probably does isolate audiences. So they just yeah. either think I, I don't want to go and see that because it's you know it'll go over my head or yeah. it's too intense for me. You know, politics is one of those things where it does make people go, oh, no, no, I don't. No, because it's it's all over there, and I, you know I I know what I know, and I don't want to know any more than that. And it can be quite. Yeah. There's also there's that there's that association with politics and intellect, and that's not necessarily true. It's like if yeah, you can yeah, follow if you can follow sport, you can follow a film. If you can follow a film, you can follow politics. It's just yeah, all yeah. It's all it's all the same stuff. But there's definitely that sort of stuff out there. You know, I know people if you speak to them about it, they just go, oh, I don't know any of that, mate. Do you know what I mean? It's that you know, those hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, they just shut down, and actually, you don't have to be all or nothing. With it, I think the, actually, sorry, no, go on. Go on. the criticism of films like this, where it's like a political film, is and you know, Hollywood is considered lefty. It is that the, the audience is one that you're already speaking to, is one that already knows the, the argument. Like mm. the people who will go out and see a George Clooney directed political drama, yeah, yeah, that politicians are all crooked and they already know that kind of to get ahead, your mm. soul is you have to sell your soul. So yeah. it's one of them where it's like, what was the point of making this? Because it's 
it's, it's not going to reach anyone you know yeah, yeah it's not it's not going to bring in new new audience members they're either yeah they're either already yeah. going to be they're going to be going to see it and getting exactly what they think they're getting yeah. which is what they get yeah. sort of thing aren't they no one's wearing a maga hat and being like oh <laughs> shit oh actually yeah oh this is really well thought oh. <laughs> I never thought of it that way, actually. I'm just going to go and... Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I suppose the only other thing is outside of America, I do think, and you've already touched on this, Alex, is if you don't know the American political system, and I don't really know much about it, yeah. like, I don't understand how delegates and, and stuff like that they, works. They do try and do a bit of explanation as, the, as they're going, don't they? But it, yeah, it must be... Um... It must be difficult to kind of do that much ex- exposition, is that what you call it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it, it is. It must be difficult to do that in such a, like you say, realistic, quite fast-paced, you know, film where you kind of, you have to start, you have to start working on assumptions, don't you? Kind of like a few times, oh, oh, they must, delegates must be people where you need that vote or like, you know, yeah. something like that. But yeah. But it wasn't too bad, I didn't think, in terms no, of... No, it's it's not it's not like it's in another language or something like that. Do you know what I mean? It's not yeah. like, you know, oh my God, I have no idea what anyone's talking about here. But, um, yeah. but I mean, and that sort of thing by its very nature does just, it does just isolate audiences. Um, well, British politics is well more easy to understand than it, Jamie. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's all fine over here. I mean, how, how, how do you reckon this would look if it was a British film, Jamie? Definitely oh. be a Ken Loach film, much more low yeah. budget. Ken, yeah. like, I think the scandal would be sort of shit, like, oh, he's got a second home. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They really don't like Chippy. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, the, yeah. the amount, well, also, we've got the NHS, so. That's true. That that was that wouldn't be a plot point. No. <laughs> it would be like, you know, something like that film Brassed Off about the Brass Band. It would be like something, you know, the, the key kind of uh, issue that everyone's falling apart on is like the local community community center or something instead of <laughs> or it'd be, it's not that he's got the intern pregnant but it's that he caught in front of the intern in a queue yeah yeah um, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. the worst thing you can do a queue at a prep yeah 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, okay, well, we'll move on to talk about the critical reception then. So, so, so obviously, Alex, you picked it mainly because it's underseen, but we'll look at everything as well, and then we'll decide yeah. if it if it is underseen or or how the ratings come out. Uh, do you have any idea how it did, sort of critically or box office wise or anything like that, or shall I just tell you? I feel like it didn't get that big of a. I feel like it almost went under the radar a bit. But mm. I, I could be wrong. Um, box office, I feel like again, it, it didn't. I don't remember a feeling at the time like it was everywhere or like it smashed mm. or anything. Mm. I would I say, feel, all right. Mm. I reckon box office. This was probably a low budget, so it didn't it didn't bomb, but it didn't set the world alight. Yeah, like mid range like sort of thing. With with those names, you can probably make this for thirty million back then. Um, uh, because not it's not like there's any big set pieces. There's no explosions. No car like, chases. We're, we're, yeah, we're paying for a restaurant. Uh, hopefully, everyone leaves. You know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I think because it's not like considered. Oh, this one the best political. It's probably. Probably six point fives across the board. I'd, I'd guess. Yeah, cool. yeah which I'd say is underrated. I think you know it's, mm. it's good. Mm. Let's have a look yeah. so at the time. We'll do the scores first. So at the time of recording over on IMDb, get seven point one out of ten. So if you can flake that up to seventy one percent, and then Rotten what? Tomatoes, the audience give it seventy three percent, and the critics are a bit kinder. They give it eighty three percent. So if you average that out, it's a seven and a half out of ten or a seventy five percent. So how does that make you feel, Alex? Yeah, I think it's definitely better than that. I'm not saying it's like, oh my God, it's a 10 out of 10 film. I, but for me, I think just because of the amount it made, it taught me as well that, that it made me think about. Like it taught mm. me about like, oh, okay, this is like politics is just awful. You know, like, mm. like it, it, it isn't black and white. It's like good people feel like they have to do bad things to get into. And I'm talking about like taking on other politicians that you don't like. I'm not talking about shagging the intern. But like... <laughs> Which you, but you do have to do that now. Um, no, it's uh, I, for me. I think it was. It's more like an eight point five. Mm, mm. What What yeah. do you reckon, Jamie? I have to say, I'm actually on board with the critics there, just because I think the. I know I was saying that the downplaying of it is good, but I think there is room for a bit more excitement in it. You know, uh, there is yeah. room for uh, just something that hooks you. You know, a reason why this didn't win any Oscars, I think, is because there isn't that. Oscar winning scene there isn't mm. there isn't, there isn't like the, the proper money shot where you're like that's it that's what it's going to be remembered for sort of thing yeah I mean the, 
and also it's it's kind of it's directed well but the, the only image i can remember from this is when they stood behind the american flag george clooney's in front of the american flag doing the speech mm. and then the two of them are discussing the actual campaign behind the american flag and i was like oh that's quite good visual metaphor that mm. they've got and then he just, i think every other scene should have been behind some kind of flag would have been good <laughs> just walking <laughs> along different yeah. flags yeah <laughs> but, you know what bigger I mean? flag each time <laughs> i thought i thought there'd be a bit more like visual flourish uh but mm. it's, it kind of it's almost because it it's it. funny as well because the other thing with particularly with american films about politics you associate them with patriotism mm. whereas this is i wouldn't say this is a particularly patriotic political film right. it's just going oh this is how it is it's not it's not anti it's not fro it's just this is something yeah. that might happen type of thing and i think that's quite interesting because you, you think of I'm trying to think of things like Patton. Yeah, I know that's more of a war yeah. film, but you do think of it more as like they are a little bit more patriotic, aren't yeah. they? Over the, uh, like, yeah. particularly in America as well. I mean, Independence Day. Independence Day. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are, we get our little bit to shine where we're all in the desert or something in Independence yeah. Day. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all posh. Um, anyway, so you picked it because it's under scenes. So looking at the box office then, according to Box Office Mojo, it made 76 million quid worldwide. Um, now I wouldn't turn down seventy six million quid, but if you think about yeah, who's it? if you think about who's in it, yeah, I would have said I would have hoped that would be more. Mm, yeah, I, I'm surprised it didn't top a hundred. What, what do you think, Jamie? Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably made money unless mm. unless mm. he was writing checks to his friends. But uh, I think if you you kind of take the rule of, I reckon this was about thirty million budget, double the market, and so it's made money. It's done okay, but yeah, they probably. Didn't go on like like nowadays. You would have had Gosling and Clooney on Graham Norton, mm. and they that, would have yeah. put, they would have had a bit more spark between them. You'd you'd have put some scenes mm. in. You find out to... one of them can juggle, and then oh yeah. look what we've got yeah. here. Here we what... go. Yeah. One of them got his assistant pregnant. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Scamp Clooney. I'm joking. Uh, there's no evidence that George Clooney's ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we think then? Is that underseen? I'd say that is underseen. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go then, Alex. So you said under scene and it is under scene, so you've got to be happy with that. I've got to be happy with that, but everyone go and watch it. Let me know what you think. Absolutely. And don't let the fact that it's political put you off because it's got a great cast, great script. It's well yeah. put together and it's tightly told as well. So, uh, well, Alex, thanks very much for coming on. So tell the guys at home, what have you got going on? Where can people find your stuff? Oh, just follow me on Instagram and you can see absolutely everything on there. Mm. Um, um, yeah, it's Alexandra Haddo, all one word. You can see where I'm gigging. I'm doing I'm doing Leicester Square Theatre soon as a sport Ooh. actor, but still. <laughs> nice, nice. Who are you supporting? Uh, supporting Tom Ward. Ooh. So that'll Bit. be fun. Um, yeah, you'll you'll see. And I'm going on going on a little tour next year, so that'll be fun. Excellent. Well, we'll make sure to put links in the show notes, and we'll you know throw some stuff out on there on social media as well. Alex, thanks so much for coming on. It's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you about the Ides of March. Oh, thank you so much for having me, and thanks for letting me pedal my cause. <laughs> <laughs> well there we go then the Ides of March there is indeed Underseen which is why uh, Alex picked it and thank you very much for Alex for coming on uh, it was absolutely brilliant to talk to her uh, do make sure you check out her stuff I'll put uh, links and uh, you know stuff in the show notes we'll put some stuff out on social media she's very very funny uh, so do check her uh, out uh, we'll be back next week with another episode in the meantime if you'd like to get in touch with us it's films that pod at gmail.com or all the social medias if you just search for just films and that on uh, Facebook Twitter Instagram uh, TikTok and YouTube you'll find us we're always putting stuff out there um, and uh, all that remains to be said is we'll see you next week it's goodbye from me cheerio bye Hey fam, it's Natasha Rothwell. I wanted to tell you about my brand new show on Hulu called How to Die Alone. It asks the question, if your life flashes before your eyes, could you say that you really lived? We follow Melissa, the character I play, after a near-death experience awakens her to the fact that she'd never really been living. I hope you join us on this journey as we follow someone who's waking up to life for the first time. Stream How to Die Alone starting Friday, September 13th on Hulu. To everyone else, this is a desk. But to you, it's a launch pad. Your starting block. This ain't a desk. This is opportunity. 
Students who switch and save can get the Moto G 5G on us at your local Boost retailer. The Boost Mobile Network includes roaming coverage from partner networks, which cover 99% of the U.S. population. Moto G 5G on us when you switch with ID verification and new $60 plan activation. Taxes extra. All prices, fees, features, functionality, and other offers are subject to change without notice. See participating dealers for details.